Hey, what's up guys? This is KD Cloudy and this video is everything you need to know about the ongoing green tint issues, the display issues basically which have been popularized by the OnePlus 8 Pro and most recently the OnePlus Nord. The OnePlus 8 Pro part I have covered in my channel previously in a sort of a fiasco uh, but yeah the OnePlus Nord over here has like much less intense issues there are no black crush and there's just slight banding and a much more prominent green tinting but other than that the display has been fine hdr video playback has been fine no black crush at all and the 90 hertz and everything it's just a pleasant experience to use but yeah now more recently there has been just more new added context and nuance and developments in this entire uh, shroud of mystery regarding these OLED display issues and uh, it's now just impossible to ignore. Now it turns out that these green tinting and banding and all these issues I mentioned is an inherent characteristic of OLED displays and when you compare the OnePlus 8 Pro or Nord with any recently released phone with an AMOLED display both of them are gonna show those same tent issues and, and even banding in most cases. Now but my question is that if if this is an inherent characteristic of OLED displays why are we talking about it now? Why not five years ago? Why not eight years ago? Because OLED has been around for quite a while now. Why is it that we're only talking about it right now? Like who's at fault over here? Uh, is it like, is it like this universal phenomenon that every OLED display released in the last two, three years with high refresh rate have green tinting problems or uh, it's just users are being overly nitpicky and entitled uh, just for no reason at all. Turns out, it's actually both. Okay, here's the thing, let's tackle this matter one by one. If you Google the words green tinting and OLED, you'll actually find a ton of results, not just for phones, but OLED televisions. And you'll find a myriad of people and user complaints about seeing green tinting and banding on the latest LG OLED displays. And I'm talking, th this is like high-end stuff, like. $1,000, $2,000 TVs, high-end stuff from LG and Samsung. And so it looks like OLED is in fact kind of flawed at its core. But you know what, let me just clarify one thing for a bit. These issues which are being reported the most with TVs and phones are green tint and banding. And the set of issues I mentioned in the OnePlus 8 Pro video were green tinting, banding, Black Crush and Image Retention, four of these if I recall correctly. And the truth is that the four of these, like the four set of these issues are sort of unrelated and not dependent upon each other. So you could have either one of these issues, you could have either any two of these issues, it depends. It just totally is random. But in fact, what I can tell you is that the occurrence of these issues are mostly probability based green tint having the most probability, banding having the next. So it's really important to, you know, separate out these issues and just not bunch them together uh, to avoid confusion basically. And now going back to the fact that our users being like overly nitpicky uh, regarding this entire matter, I mean, yes. Like it's because users are nitpicking that we found these issues in the first place. Like if you see the first wave of press we got from, you know, the OnePlus 8 Pro uh, display issues, it, were, it was basically a bunch of users reporting it for the first time. And after that, it just spread like wildfire after like big tech blocks start covering it. And people start to get paranoid and they start to uh, notice issues even if they don't have any on their display, something which is called the placebo effect. And if you take like, the market, the target market of OnePlus consumers, the, the, the this entire market is like filled with tech enthusiasts. And if you just go to the OnePlus subreddit, it's almost like all of these guys are like 
connoisseurs in tech, these guys are definitely going to nitpick in their thousand dollar purchase of the next smartphone. So when these users go from their old rock solid TV or rock solid phone and buy something and they immediately notice it. They immediately notice that, that something is off with the display. And the truth is that these users, these OnePlus users or any of these users who reported it on Reddit or to the press, these guys are savvy enough to pinpoint what is actually the issue. So yeah, it's actually pretty simple when you boil it down that the amount of issues which get reported is kind of a direct function of what type of devices you put into what type of hands, if that made any sense. Here's the thing, OLED has never had the reputation of bringing the most accurate colors as compared to LCDs. Apple, Steve Jobs and both Tim Cook and Phil Schiller, all three of these guys have been repeatedly uh, have been against OLED for all these years until they put it in their iPhone. Funnily enough, and not to my surprise, Apple has had the least amount of occurrences and complaints about green tinting on their OLED iPhones. And I, I, I'm i not really to, trying to spark a conspiracy theory that Samsung, their OLED supplier is just uh, leaving all the good OLEDs for themselves and for Apple and supplying everyone with bad OLEDs. I'm not trying to say that. What I'm trying to say is that Apple and Sony, Sony being the, again, one company which has had the least amount of complaints with their OLED displays in their Sony Bravia TVs and also their phones. Um, and the reason why Sony and Apple have the least amount of complaints is because of one word and that is calibration. Calibration. Calibration is just so important when you're manufacturing TVs or any displays of any kind, whether it's IPS, VA, OLED, anything. Calibration is super important. And Apple and Sony, usually when uh, their displays get shipped from Samsung to their factories in China or India, they will calibrate their displays themselves to match and Make sure, making sure that colors across all iPhones ever produced are the same. And calibration, if you don't know already, is the process of resetting and telling the display which which is the correct white value, which is the correct gray value, in so as to ensure proper, uniform, and consistent colors, and also luminance across their entire line of whatever they're making, TVs or smartphones. And calibration processes require like proper hardware, proper software, and proper professionals who know what they're doing and proper experience. This is not something which can be done by consumers. And OLED calibration is like even more difficult. Now I've been watching this channel called AGTV Test for a couple of months now. Uh, it's run by a guy named Vincent. He's just, he's just super funny. And the amount of information he provides through his videos is just impeccable. He mostly does reviews of uh, televisions, OLED televisions, QLED televisions, and he's a professional calibrator, like display calibrator. And anytime he faces any of these green tinting or banding issues in any of his OLEDs, he just calibrates it by himself. And 99% of the time, it fixes any sort of tinting the display might have and any sort of banding the display might have. So yeah, manufacturers or brands like Realme or OnePlus or any brand basically who's facing any of these display issues should take a page from Apple's book or Sony's book and calibrate their displays properly before they leave the factory. And that's the only way to ensure that these green tinting problems never happen. And yeah, basically, so that's, I guess that's the end of the video, right? I mean, Apple and Sony make sure to put that extra effort to calibrating their displays and other manufacturers, brands just don't. And that's why they are plagued by these display issues. <sighs> Yeah, um, you know what? Let me let me talk about one more one more thing. PWM. Now, what is PWM flickering? PWM flickering complaints are basically by OLED iPhone users who are saying that they are getting like high frequency flickering, and it's basically giving them headaches. Now, firstly, this whole PWM thing is kind of a misnomer. PWM or pulse width modulation is a is a mechanism it's a technology basically where the brightness of the uh, display is dimmed 
by cutting off the power on and off at a very high frequency it gives you the illusion that your display brightness is getting lowered and the other way of doing or the other way of reducing the brightness of your screen is actually just reducing the power which goes to your screen and that is called dc dimming fun fact but yeah this issue can be justified by the original statement that what type of devices are being handed out to what type of users these users are used to lcd based iphones for the longest time and lcd does not use pwm so suddenly when they are given this uh, oled iphone with pwm their eyes are definitely going to pick that up even if pwm is an issue or is not an issue that can be debated but when users are actually get, are facing these and complaining about these you might as well call it an issue and the reason why reviewers don't mention any of these issues in their videos or reviews is because that they change their phones and they keep testing out new stuff every month every two months and they're constantly being exposed to latest display technologies they're constantly being exposed to pwm all the time they it's a gradient basically and if the, if you're wondering why did they not say about say anything about the OnePlus 8 Pro display issues is probably because they didn't notice it because the last five phones they tested probably had green tint too and your eyes calibrate to color temperature very very easily and i guess that's the breakdown but you know what we talked about this issue enough let's now talk practically and the practical truth is that all of these issues pwm green tinting banding all of these issues are minor that's the truth and the thing is that like uh, the issues being reported are like smartphone pictures and smartphone cameras shooting displays of other smartphones is like a weird combo because smartphone cameras pump up the iso way high and that kind of exaggerates the 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 actual issue over there and i try to you know whenever i cover display issues on this channel on the OnePlus 8 Pro or the Nord i try to keep the iso just right so that it's accurate perfectly so yeah th that's one thing and the placebo effect is another thing and i've constantly iterated over and over again if you don't notice any of these issues by yourself and if you love the phone enough that none of these display issues bother you and you don't feel like being nitpicky enough then don't it's totally fine it's totally fine to love your phone even if you know that it has issues or if you don't even notice any of these issues that's even better don't let me anybody who, who you were talking to the internet don't let them tell you that you should re replace your phone or return your phone or your phone is broken it's it totally comes down to what you enjoy using the most and what you want or expect out of your own purchase that being said no i i will not return the one plus nord like i said it's my mom's and she's like totally oblivious to any of these issues she cannot even uh see that banding and uses her phone in light mode anyway and uh, it's, it's gonna stay around so don't me make memes about it but yeah do i regret returning my one plus eight pro uh no the reason being that 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 thing had severe black crush issues with or without dc dimming on and i like to watch hdr that hdr video was basically the entire uh reason why i bought that phone and the amount of like good things that that were being said about the display and the display mate and all that marketing all that hype given all that and given that hefty price tag and the actual issues in the OnePlus 8 Pro i was actually kind of disappointed and you could make a case for phones like the OnePlus Nord and other mid-range phones which bring high refresh rate and AMOLED at at like lower prices and you can definitely cut some slack for them but even at that point i think i wholeheartedly believe that manufacturers and OEMs and all of these brands should go that extra mile should strive for providing accurate colors on any of their displays which are shipped i've been recording for an hour now and i think i just 
totally went overboard with a freaking green tint issue but yeah um if you have any doubts any queries leave them down below in the comments and i'll try to answer them i am no expert but i will try to answer them and yeah that's basically it thank you so much for watching hope you learned something and i'll catch you guys in the next one cheers